Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church of Oak Park. We're glad to have you today. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and so we're glad to have you as we continue our conversation on the Incarnation. Today, we'll be learning how through the Incarnation we receive the eternal Word of God. As we continue in worship today, Monroe and Pat Saffold will come and lead us in our call to worship and in our invocation prayer. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and the divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often, we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity. God with us, right now, we forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel. God is with us. We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into the presence of God as close as our own breath, this, is, this in a confused and confusing world is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that company is coming. O come, O come, come. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we come together in worship this morning to give you thanks and praise your greatness. We praise you for your wonderful deeds. Your power is unlimited. Your wisdom is beyond compare. Your grace is overwhelming. Your love is never failing. We eagerly await uh, and joyfully await your coming to earth as our Savior. This fourth week of Advent, our houses have been made ready. This week is a time to be filled with complete joy and the peace of this Advent journey. The tree is trimmed with beautiful lights and sentimental ornaments, yet in the isolation of this pandemic, we remain steadfast and lift our eyes to you. There may be presents under the tree, but family may not be able to come. The ingredients for a wonderful meal have been purchased, but the table may have few guests. Our hearts are filled to overflowing with love for you and for the comfort you bring us in times of trouble. Emmanuel, God with us, come into our waiting hearts. Sit at our table that we may celebrate the miraculous day of your birth. Welcome, Lord Jesus, for it is in your holy name we pray, amen. Father's love begotten, ere the worlds began to be, he is Alpha and Omega, he the source, the ending he, of the things that are that have been. And that future you shall see evermore and evermore. All ye heights in heaven adore him, angels 
This is the Gospel of John, chapter 1, 1 through 9. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Waiting, we are waiting, we are waiting for the coming King. Waiting, we are waiting.
took a lot of work to put that video together, all of those people singing together, but it was good to see our choir again, and we're thankful for all of your hard work. For those of you at home, um, you'll have an opportunity to see more of Joel's hard work and Mitten and Eric's hard work on Thursday night for our Christmas Eve service, and we hope that you'll join us at seven o'clock for that. As we continue, let us go now to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, we are grateful for this day grateful for this time in which we can come into your house for worship. We know, Lord, that we are not able to be together in person, but we're able to be together virtually. And we know that the church is not the building, but it's the work of your kingdom, the people who are doing your work in your kingdom. So, Lord, we ask that you will help us during this season of Advent, as we've learned about our Messiah, about our Savior, our Emmanuel, and finally today, the eternal Word, we ask, Lord, that you might reveal yourself to us again. Help us to sense your presence in our lives. We know that you've taught us many things, including how to pray when you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory now and forevermore. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. This is how John, the gospel writer, begins his gospel about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And it's different than the ways in which the other gospels share their story. The gospel whom Jesus loved, John, introduces his story with a word that spoke in the beginning and still speaks to us today. This word is an eternal word. I read recently that out of every 1,000 books written and published every year, 650 of them are forgotten within a year. And at the end of three years, 150 more have slipped from our memory. At the end of seven years, only about 50 books have survived. All of which goes to show that the popularity enjoyed by the average written word is rather short-lived. The vast majority of written words are soon forgotten. Thankfully, that's not true of all words, and it's certainly not true of God's word. One of the interesting things to note when studying the life of Jesus of Nazareth is that each of the four gospel writers in our New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, begins their story by placing our Lord in a certain historical context. And yet, each of them does it in a different way. John would have us to know that the gospel was not an innovation. It was not a turning point in the mind or heart of God. Some people see a great divide 
between the God depicted in the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament. And make no mistake, there there is a difference. But the difference resides in our perspective, not in God's perspective. The gospel, the good news of God's grace and mercy, has been in existence since the very beginning of time. In fact, the gospel was in the heart and mind of God when he created the world. We just didn't see it until we met Jesus. The fourth gospel in our New Testament has been called the most theological of the four gospel accounts. And this is no surprise. Most scholars agree that this gospel was written later than the other three. So John had more time to think about what he was going to write. And that's precisely what he did. No one can deny that the fourth gospel reveals deep theological reflection. And we see this in the very first verse. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. Now John, writing in Greek, uses the word logos. Logos means word. And like Luke, John desired to proclaim a universal gospel, good news for the entire world. That's why he used this term, logos. It's hard to over-exaggerate the multitude of meanings in this one word. Everyone, or so it seemed, believed something about the so-called Lagos. To the Jews, Lagos had its roots in the Old Testament, where the word of God, or the word of the Lord was viewed as a sovereign energy that could call the created order into being. Just go back and read the account of the creation in Genesis chapter 1. We're told that all of creation was called into being by the spoken word, the spoken logos of God. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, and there was. To Greek philosophers, particularly the Stoics, this word logos was viewed as the principal uh, the principle and pattern that gives the world its character and coherence indeed many in the gentile world understood the logos to be both the glue that holds the world together and the clue to the meaning and purpose of life now i wonder Do you see what John was doing when he wrote his gospel? Do you get it? He was reaching out to persons of every conceivable persuasion. Or at least every conceivable persuasion to him. And he was saying to them, all of us have heard of the so-called word, the logos, Some of you believe that this world was created into being and called into being by the Logos. John said, I do too. And then he said, but others of you believe that the world is held together by the Logos. And and John declared again, I do too. He even said, still others believe that the meaning and purpose of life is determined by this Lagos. John said once again, I do too. But then John went on and shared words of encouragement, words that needed to be heard by the whole world. He said, dear friends, I want to tell you one more thing. This Lagos 
that existed in the beginning with God indeed is the same Logos that is one and the same with God, who called the world into being and holds it together by His power and gives purpose and meaning to this world. This Word became flesh and dwelled among us. He came to this world in the form of a human being and lived with us. Literally, He placed Himself in our world. Walked the roads that we walked. Experienced life in the way that we do. And this Word, this Word that became flesh and dwelled among us, was none other than Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Mary and Joseph, who lived and loved and taught and performed miracles and finally was persecuted and died on the cross and was buried and raised from the grave on the third day. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh. That's the story John wanted to tell. He believed it was the story that the entire world needed to hear. It was a story of good news, a story of grace and peace, a story of mercy and forgiveness, a story of just how much God loves this world. It makes sense. That in this fourth gospel, this gospel of John, we find perhaps the most familiar words in the New Testament. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. These words ring true in our world and in our hearts. That God, the creator of the universe, the eternal word, the Lagos, loves us. It is this story of God's eternal word. This is the story that John wanted us to hear. It's good news. And the even better news for us is that it still speaks to us. Now, I have to admit, most of us, if not all of us, speak a different language than the Hebrews and the Greeks of old. We seldom, if ever, think about that logos. But that doesn't matter. Because the eternal word that was with God in the beginning, and even was God, who became flesh and dwelt among us and speaks to us still in our own very language, is our Savior, our Messiah, our Emmanuel. The eternal Word that was with God in the beginning and even was God, who became flesh and dwelt among us, speaks to us still in our own language. Which goes to say that whatever word you need to hear at this moment in your life is a word that God is prepared to speak to you through Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. Just think about it. Because there are some of you today who are struggling beneath the weight of the world, and you're trying to carry the world on your shoulders. And the Word of God for you is, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Some of you need to hear that word today. 
And it's a word that God is willing to share with you. Others of you are carrying the grief of a loved one who has died. And the word of God for you is, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Still, for others of you, you're carrying the burden of some sin that you committed long ago, or maybe recently, maybe even today. And the word of God for you is, your sins are forgiven. Go, sin no more. And yes, there are always those among us who are lonely, who feel that they are, in, they are trapped in a dungeon of isolation without a person in the world who cares. During this pandemic, there are a lot more of those people. And the word of God for you is, Lo, I am with you always, even to the ends of the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, whatever word you need to hear today, Christ is willing to share that word with you. Because Christ is the eternal word, the word that never stops speaking, the word that constantly is sharing with us something new. The, the, the word is always revealing itself to us in a different way. Do you believe that? This word made flesh dwelt among us and shares with us the truth about life and tells us that when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. And so, brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to the truth. The Lagos of the world. The Word of God speaking to you, whatever words you need to hear today. He's willing to share those with you every day. Will you allow the eternal Word of God to speak to your heart? Will I? God, strengthen us. God, lift us up. God, speak to us yet again so that we might understand fully what you have in store for our lives. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response today is, What Child Is This? As we sing this hymn of response, I invite you to listen for the voice of God speaking to you. Listen for that word speaking to you and respond today. Let's sing.
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise your name, and we ask that you just continue to watch over us and be with us and bless us. And Lord, we just thank you that you are watching over us even in this time of the pandemic. And Lord, now let us uh, offer up to you our tithes and our offerings so that we might glorify your kingdom. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray, amen.
Thank you for joining us here today at First Baptist Church of Oak Park. We're glad to have had you. A couple of announcements to t- today before we, we finish up our time. There will be Sunday school today at 1145 on Zoom, and we'd love to, to, for you to join us for that. You can uh, join us by going on our website and looking up um, Fellowship Online together. On Tuesday night, we will also have our uh, Bible study. We'll continue this conversation about the Incarnation and, and that'll be at 6.30. You can join us on Zoom. On Christmas Eve, we will have a service that is pre-recorded for you. It will be available to you at 7 p.m., and we hope that you will, will join us for that. It will be available on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our church website, and we hope that you will take advantage of, uh, of watching that and preparing yourself for Christmas. Also, on Christmas Day, there will be a brief uh, video Uh, just about Christmas, and we hope that you'll join us for that as well. Each December, First Baptist collects money for uh, a missions offering for the ABC Retired Ministers and Missionaries Offering. There is a video that you can watch, and that is on our uh, church website as well, but it's also in the link that I sent to you for the, e- uh, for the worship service today. And so if you'd like to, to, do, uh, to participate in that, if you'd like to watch the video and then respond by giving, we invite you to do so. And uh, we hope that, that we can continue to raise uh, money for this so that we can help out those ministers and missionaries who have served churches around our country and across the globe so well. As we continue these last few days of Advent, may we remember that God is still speaking to us. Therefore, brothers and sisters, whatever word you need to hear, may you be reminded that God is willing to speak them to you. Go and be forever changed. Amen. Amen. Joel's going to lead us out with a postlude. Thank you for your time today. We look forward to seeing you on Christmas Eve at 7 o'clock.